Because I think every time we use those terms, that's what keeps it going. Folks, we are all, we have all come from the same source. We've all came from the same God, the same Heavenly Father. And this, again, is another aspect of partiality. It saddened me that I was talking to someone just recently, and they were telling me that the reason why that this other person didn't want to come to church is because we had too many white people. And I told her, I said, well, why don't you just tell him to come, and that'll be one less. I said, that kind of stuff bothers me. I don't know if it bothers you, but it should. Because, brother, that, that is not the right thing. That is worldly wisdom. That is satanic and demonic wisdom. In fact, that's not even wisdom at all, is it? But again, it's another form of partiality. I've told you about one of the churches that I was at. And I had to, to tell a gentleman who spoke to me one day and he used a term that was very derogative. And I turned to him and I said, you need to lose that term. And he had a good response. He told me, he said, I'm going to pray that God will remove that from my tongue. It's good. Hopefully I'll never hear you say it again. But even though it removed from his tongue, it didn't remove from his heart. Because that's truly how he felt. He was partial. I think a person should be judged not on their color of their skin, but on their ability. And that's, just, that's one of the things I was telling her. Spurgeon, he tells of a lady who was visited by a minister on her deathbed. And she said to him, I want to ask you one question now that I'm about to die. And he said, well, what is it? She said, oh, I want to know if there are two places in heaven. Because I could not bear that Betsy in the kitchen should be in heaven along with me. Because she is so unrefined. The minister said, don't trouble yourself about that. For until you get rid of your accursed pride, you will never enter heaven at all. Until we deal with these issues in our heart and realize that this is our fallenness, we too may be those who stand outside of heaven. This is dealing with the heart. So when you go back to James, James is talking about this sin of how we treat one another, of being partial, treating visitors with greater respect, treating poor with no respect, dishonoring the poor man, honoring the rich man, and therefore violating God's royal law. What is God's royal law? Look at verse 8. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Partiality is sin. When you break this law, James says you break all the laws, according to verses 9 through 12. And then he says, verse 13, to show no mercy is to receive no mercy. We are to be of the same mind toward one another. We are to be impartial. Paul repeats this later in chapter 15, verse 5, when he tells them to be of the same mind with one another according to Christ. I like what J. Vernon McGee says. It's, this is not talking about a uniformity of thought. It's meant here to talk about having the mind of Christ. If you have the mind of Christ, you will treat each other the same. And you'll live in a harmonious way with one another. You won't be partial. Even Paul's closing words to the Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 13, 11, he says, Finally, brethren, rejoice, be made complete, be comforted, be like-minded. Be like-minded, be harmonious. So listen, do you have the mind of Christ? Do you respond to your brother or sister or to a stranger with impartiality? James is actually saying that the legitimacy of your faith is revealed in how you treat others and whether you are impartial or not. So, beloved, as we 
bring this to a close, I want to just encourage you to examine yourself tonight. You might not have had to deal with something like this before, and maybe the Holy Spirit is wanting you to deal with it now. If that is an issue in your heart. How do you treat one another? Do you treat everybody the same? You know, there are a lot of people in our church. There are a lot of people that are hurting. And the only way you would know that would be to talk to them. And not just once or twice or three times, but a lot of times. Because usually people don't reveal everything in the first couple conversations. How are you treating other believers? How are you treating one another here at Change by Grace? Are you bearing one another's burdens? Are you giving preference to one another? Are you praying for one another? Are you honoring one another in that manner? By putting others first and living in harmony with them? I know from time to time we'll struggle in relationships. But what should be at the heart of our relationships is obedience to Christ. Obedience to Him, a desire to honor Him, a desire not to take this faith that we have and be impartial with it and say, listen, I'm only going to talk to a select group of people. I'm only going to share it with a few people. Only certain people that fit this criteria. That's partiality. Or I'm only going to talk to this man or this woman because they're this color. I mean, you know, I, I was walking in the neighborhood near where Aaron lives. And I remember meeting a lady out there. This is about six, seven years ago. And she was a black woman. And you know what she told me? She said, I went to your church, and somebody told me not to come back. I went, what? I mean, we're usually trying to get people to church and not tell them not to come back, right? She said, that's what she said. She told me not to come back. And it wasn't due to anything she had done. It was due to the color of her skin. I told someone the other day, I said, you know, before I came to Christ, I had those thoughts in my head. And I don't even know why. And the only thing I think of, number one, is depravity. It's depravity of the heart. But it's also the people that you hang around with. The influences. And whether we know it or not, I mean, just what 1 Corinthians says, that bad company corrupts good morals. So, beloved, I want to encourage you, treat everybody the same and love one another, submit to one another, be devoted to one another in brotherly love, give honor to one another by how you treat each other. If you've never surrendered your life to Christ, then you're, then you're still in that, you're still in your sin and you're still in that mindset. But let me say this, even though Christ can change you and transform you, unless you surrender that also to Christ, you can still be in that mindset. Charles Spurgeon He was saying this, and this is the epitome of being impartial to, to everyone, including unbelievers. And he was focusing our attention on the gospel. And he says, oh, if the damned in hell could come to earth, they would let you know what solemn work it is to hear the gospel. Think not that you can hear the gospel without having your salvation or damnation affected thereby. So he says, the most important question concerning any man living is this. Is he a saved soul or not? Not whether he is rich or well off, whether he's white or black, whether he comes from a good living, a good family, is he saved or lost? That's the issue. He says, is he a child of God or an heir of wrath? So, have you been delivered from the love of sin? Have you been rescued from the habit of sin? And have you been set free from the desire to sin? If you haven't, then you haven't been saved. And I want to call you right now to pray. And I want to call you to surrender your life to Christ. And embrace Him. 
and let him take away the prejudices of our heart.